Rainbow Lake. After all these years, it's still the place that gets so many people talking. For many anglers, it's top of their bucket list of places they'd love to visit if they ever got the chance. But it's not been without its problems. It's had closures because of COVID, even more so in 2022. The severe bushfires that raged through the region almost brought an end to the Rainbow Lake as we know it. fires literally came up to the edge of the lake and wiped out much of the surrounding woodland. Thankfully, the lake survived all of that. Behind some of the swims, where there were forests, there are now fields, and it looks a little bit different from the air. But, thankfully, anglers are fishing rainbow again and enjoying what it has to offer. Some of the swims are still closed, Swim 17 is one of those which still poses a little bit of a danger and of course, fish being fish, that's where they want to be, a safe swim where they can rest up and hide away from angling pressure. The fishing wasn't actually the main reason for us being there that week. Instead it was our good old mate Tom Duncan Dunlop who managed to get the lake exclusive for the week celebrating his 50th birthday. He had invited several friends along, us included thankfully, and uh, yeah we were going to have a good fun week. We had a draw for swims, uh, Tom and a couple of the others were going in swim 18. We picked out swims 1 and 2 which wouldn't have been my first choice at that time of year, potentially quite a tough area. but. It was an area that I'd fished several times in the past, so I had good experience of it. Maybe knew a few little spots where I might find a fish or two. Only time would tell. I've got to say, it is nice to be back here. There's plenty of times over the years that I did wonder whether I was ever going to come back or not. It's probably, well, seven years, I suppose, eight years for Joan since we've been here. So it's a long time and yeah, I just thought my time here was sort of done. You know, I had some brilliant times here sort of over 10, 15, 18 years ago. And, you know, it come to a point where if I was going to fish new places, uh, something I had to give. So Rainbow was one of those. And, you know, in the last few years, I've got to so many lovely places, like just recently, Germany and Slovakia and, you know, places like that, which if I was still doing like the two, three trips here every year, probably would never happen. So time has to move on. Um, but plenty of people said to me, you know, why don't you go back to Rainbow? I want to see another Rainbow video. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, well, I'm here anyway now. But by the same token, you know, people say to me, oh, do you ever fish in England anymore? When are you going to do some English stuff? So, yeah, there is only so many weeks in a year. And uh, now I'm here, got to say, yeah, it's beautiful. All the old memories come flooding back. And uh, looks wise, yeah, it's not changed a great deal. I mean, some things have changed. There's, there's less fish now. Uh, there's more rules. <laughs> but... You know, that was always going to happen. It happens everywhere. So, uh, but you know, the rules are sensible rules, just keeping things tidy and respecting other people. You know, that's, that's the name of the game, as it is anywhere, really. As long as you can do that, you're all right. It might be less fishier now than what there was sort of 10, 15 years ago, but there's still loads of good ones here. There is lots of good fish. So, you know, there's, there's always something to go at. And... Even even if you're in a quiet swim, that doesn't mean it's going to be quiet all week because, yeah, they move about. They do move about. It was always one of the features at Rainbow. People used to say to me, one thing I couldn't stand is getting in the swim and not being able to move because you're stuck with it. Well, it never mattered here. One, you can plan for the trip ahead of time. And, you know, every, every swim is a little bit different here. This one's got a lot of room, but it's got a few little snaggy areas. So, you know, but you can come prepared to fish wherever you're going to be. And 
the fish do move about. You know, there's, there's swims I've known where they can be absolutely dead. You can go out there and you can see there's not a fish in the swim. And you think, well, that's going to be a bit of a long, long old week or whatever. Two or three, three days in, all of a sudden, fish start turning up and uh, there's holding areas on here and there's areas where the fish move through. Uh, and normally, through the course of the week, everyone has a chance, which, which is nice. And everyone has a chance with good fish. That's, you know, it's always been one of the features at Rainbow. There's so many good fish in here. To be honest, well, this week isn't about that for us. This is about celebrating Tom's birthday. And uh, of course, I want to catch a fish. You know, it's, it's never the same going home with a blank as it is with a fish under your belt. So it was a lovely group of people on here. And the atmosphere of Rainbow makes it and the setup makes it a friendly place that element of competition isn't there which is really nice and it's it's always made for like really happy fishing on here so yeah a perfect place to come and uh, celebrate tom's 50th and yeah he's the reason you know i've come back this week with joan and yeah just lovely to be back here again fishing the old place again and uh yeah in with a chance of one, one or two of those rainbow lumps that are out there. Yeah, no, it is nice to be back. <laughs> it all looks a bit funny with the old bottle rigs, but um, they do work on here. Nice and hard there, it's 15 foot, but it is nice and hard. Don't know if you can see the little stop knot. I set the stop knot about three foot above the depth of the water so that it's not directly above, but just when that tightens up back at base, the bottle just sits up like that. Yeah, it keeps all that line up away from the snacks and everything else. And keeps line out of the swim actually. It does a good job of just keeping all them lines out of the, the way of the fish down there. As most people will have heard, if they've heard anything about rainbow, which most people have, um, it comes with its own style of fishing. And depending on what swims you're in, obviously, you know, sometimes it is a little bit <laughs> round islands and hooks and poles, uh, or it can be bottle fishing uh, over bars and snags and things like that. And yeah, I mean, there's not many other waters that I've fished where it's that style of fishing. So, I mean, I've had me, me bucket of, of rainbow gear. There's a few heavy leads in there. And literally, this has been shoved away in the shed since the last time I fished here. But, and what's in there is, yeah, all the old bottles and things. I mean, these green ones were given to me by Snowy, good old Snowy. Or, years ago and I've still got them. Uh, some of the the avid ones which I prefer the bottles actually. Some clear ones with a bit of tape around the top, reflective tape and black tape which helps you to see them during the day. Um, <laughs> it's amazing we made up all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Big leads they were a, a feature of fishing here. There's some, some big eight ounce tractor leads in there but you know in the past we've used sort of 10 and 12 ounce leads and rather than 
carting home a, a big bucket full of leads and everything every time I used to leave this here I used to leave it stashed where uh, no one could find it and uh, you know just come back every time it was it was here because I didn't need it anywhere else it was rainbow kit it's the first time it's been back here for a few years and yeah nice to to be using it all again I mean there were times in the past when you could get for a lot of bait here people were bringing like 500 kilos and things like that for a week and yeah I don't think there's as many fish here now and uh, action's certainly not been hectic so um, but what I've got is the the test bait from Nash um, yeah that that's a good bait the old Nash one so yeah the other the other thing that um, I always did well on in the past is making my own hook baits. I used to make some really large wafter hook baits and so I've done the same for this trip. There's there's a lot of bream in here now and I don't know where they come from but there is a lot of bream in here now and people are getting a, a few problems with those and I, you know even when I was fishing here a few years back there were bream problems but not for me. I never had problems and that was probably a lot to do with these things. They're, they're sort of Scopex squid mix with a bit of pop-up mix and uh, yeah, a bit of squid powder and Scopex obviously and yeah sort of 35 40 mil baits which might seem a bit big <laughs> but they do the job you know and I've caught plenty of carp on them here in the past so they work for the carp but they keep the broom away so you know just one of those <laughs> I had what I figured to be the right tactics for the swim. The only problem is there were no carp. <laughs> it's funny, I did say earlier that some areas, you know, they were devoid of carp sometimes and that was exactly what happened in swim one and two. I did spend a fair bit of time looking around. I put the drone up as well, which, um, yeah, gives you a good aerial view. But I also spent a lot of time out in the boat looking down all the little bays, all the little nooks and crannies, the open areas, all of the swim basically. And it was quite clear that in that early part of the session there just weren't any fish in the swim. So what do you do in that situation? Well, you just have to be patient. I'd have to sit on my hands and uh, yeah, just enjoy it and hope that at some stage fish would come into the area. fish weren't far away, you know, swims close by were doing a little bit better than what we were. Swim 5, my old mate Darren, it was his first trip down to the lake and he was soon off the mark with a nice 40 pounder. And over in Swim 21 we expected that to do well. And Kev Hewitt and Mark Bartlett were in there and they were catching, yeah, before too long and good fish as well. As for me, well I did get a bite and it was from a bass. <laughs> And it's amazing that we've noticed the bass feeding on boilies more and more at the lake. Something that predators do do on some lakes. After a quite few days, it was a Wednesday morning when I had a message from Bart over in 21. And he said, have you looked in the bay this morning at the back of your swim? There's a load of fish in there now. Sure enough, I hadn't looked, but I soon did. And uh, yeah, the, the bay that had been devoid of fish for the first few days, all of a sudden, the group had moved in there. What I couldn't quite work out was that I had a bait close to the entrance of the bay where the fish had to have passed by and it hadn't gone off. Even from above you could see the bottle and there was fish just behind it. Something wasn't quite right there. It's 
definitely fish out here. Oh, there we go. That's why that one ain't got off. Yeah, you're never going to catch if you drop it in the snags. Time to start again. I'll only go so far down here because I know there's a log that goes across. I can certainly go down here somewhere and I know it's all snaggy there. I mean, it's only a few inches deep, so the fish aren't going to go up over that. Yeah, look at that, they're fizzing down here. Yeah, I just need to drop it here. It's probably only 18 inches, two foot there. Yeah, I'm not going to go any further than that. Nice little narrow channel to bait up. So from here, my line goes up and round that little island and that gives me a straight pull. Once it's past these little islands here, I'm in open water, so, you know, it's, it's not as dodgy as it looks. I mean, it's a lovely little spot. seen the bottle <laughs> going up the lake there which is brilliant because it's out of the snags it might be going under the other rod but that's not such a big problem Uh, there you go, even though it looks precarious down all them bays. Didn't even need the boat to get it out of the... Could actually have landed this one from the bank. Not that it's a big one, it's only a little one. A oh, nice little mirror. <laughs> it is only a little baby one, but it's a carp. Did see a few of these little ones in there.
Yeah, there we go. One of Rainbow Lake's smaller carp, but they're all welcome. There we go. Here's only a little rainbow baby this one, but very welcome. <sighs> yeah, pleased to see them all the same. fish were definitely hanging around in the bay since they had arrived but they were never going to make it easy were they? They were still sitting quite a distance right down the end of the bay, not really near the baits. Yeah I mean there's obviously some stuff around here, you can see it. But most of it is actually quite clear through this channel. And I did have one, well, probably about where the boat is now. Mm. Really, the fish are further down. And I can go a little bit further down just by this next island. So I've got a nice clear channel to bring the fish back up. And the fish, from what I've seen, are all down the end of this bay. So. <clears throat> There's only a couple of ways in and out. So I ain't going to go too far down. I mean, I ain't going to go any further than this because there's a bit of woodwork starting to be around this sort of area. But I, I look at that, there was one behind me there. Jesus, there's some fish here. With any of the, this fishing, It's as dangerous as you want to make it yourself. If if you fish safely, it is generally safe enough all around. And uh, <sighs> it's so shallow there. Probably 18 inches, two feet. That's all it is. Right, that do. My bottle's a bit over depth really, but never mind. Still using the, the test fish meal from Nash that I used in Slovakia. God, and it was so good. Let's get out of here before I spook any more. bottle actually helps when you're playing them as well because it the pressure from above confuses them they're not sure which way to go and uh, they tend to be a lot easier to bring towards you because because of that pressure it's not coming straight from the rod it's coming from above them so they yeah they're not sure which way to go and by that time we've got them well in the safe areas right
Well, it took a few days to get back in the old swing of things, but um, well, the, the bays were devoid of fish when I arrived. I did have a look down them all, but they're in there today. And yeah, got this absolute beauty. There we go, 56 pound, two ounce rainbow mirror. Oh, very, very, very pleased with that. Oh, thank you, Tom, for inviting us. And uh, yeah, thank you, Rainbow, for providing a lovely fish like this. yesterday and she has got a bit of a feather sticking in.
we go, a nice rainbow common. Not a big one, but it's smaller fish that we've been seeing in the bay today. Funny enough, they've been down there all day milling around the baits, but now the clouds come over and the evening's drifting in, that's when they decided to feed. <sighs> right, let's get him back anyway. <laughs> And that is it, another rainbow trip done. Yeah, all the rods are in now, all tidied up. Even been around for a shower, so just got to meet up with everyone at the clubhouse now, say our goodbyes, and we'll be on our way. Yeah, it's been okay anyway, it's been a nice trip. First time for a long time. Don't know when we'll be back or if we'll be back, but it's been very nice anyway enjoyed our time it's been great thanks to tom for a great week i think he's enjoyed it i think everyone's enjoyed it and we certainly have so thanks rainbow and uh yeah see you sometime in the future maybe <laughs>